Okay, so a couple things just to get us ready for the final. This formula sheet will be given to you on the final. You can use it now for practicing, write notes on it, do some problems next to it as examples if you want. You can label these with their names. For instance, y equals mx plus b. Anybody remember what its actual slope name is? It's the slope-intercept form. Slope what is this one called? Um, Standard, standard form. Standard form. Standard form. Yeah. So part of your review could be going through and just making sure you remember what these names are so you know how to use them. I know for sure when I was taking the final yesterday, I used this formula. And it is really the same as this. It's two different ways of writing the same formula. These are both taking two points and finding what the slope is by finding the difference, the change in y over the change in x. There is a formula at the very bottom that I used when I took the final yesterday that is not anything we've done, but it's just a formula. And I'm going to point out to you where in the textbook to find it and do some practice problems. And then this formula will be there and you'll have it. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to know how to use it. Does, you guys got that? So um, again, I took the final, but I finished. I went to this strategic planner and I put a star next to all of the skills that are on the test. And I found a couple that are not on here that I've written in. So let's just go down through this. One and two are on there. But then there's, only, there's nothing in this section that is actually on the final. For instance, look at number seven, and I, kind, I almost started this yesterday. Find the equation of a line given two points or a point and a slope. I used the slope formula to find slope, but I never had to turn it into an equation. There was no graph that I had to look at it and decide what the equation was for it. Okay, I actually thought the final was kind of easy. Um, and not just because I teach this, like I really did think it was kind of easy. All right, now we've hit a section where a lot of this is on there. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And I want to particularly point your attention to number 12. When you go to number 12, it says solve a problem involving exponential growth and decay. We haven't talked about exponential problems. We got to quadratics and then we were finished. Exponential um, is in chapter 11. To be able to do a specific problem on the final, if you go to 11.3 and go through example two and do problems that go with example two, you'll be able to do that problem. Okay? Yeah. And this is the exact one you took the one we're taking? Correct. Like the exact same one. Exact same one. It's the exact same one we gave last year, but I didn't have my copy with my work on it, so I just did it again. Yeah. I, it's easier for me to like, know what to tell you if I've taken it myself. That's kind of what my theory was. Okay, now we're skipping down here. There's nothing in this section you have to worry about. <clears throat> we are doing 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then I've written in a couple of skills that you should know, and I wrote over here where in the book you can find them. There is the first two problems on the test say things like write an algebraic expression for three more than five times a number. And then you would have to write five times x plus three. That's in 1-1. One -one. Just review it. Because if you haven't looked at that translating between English and algebra in a while, it you might skip 1-1 one because -one it's not part of any of the practice finals. Also, add and subtract polynomials. That was in 7-7, <laughs> which we did. It was a while, <clears throat> a while ago now, um, and there's a couple of problems where you're adding and subtracting polynomials. Just go back and do some practice in 7-7. Seven, seven. I didn't look for where in the book this was, and I meant to. I apologize, but you guys can probably find it pretty quickly. There are a couple of problems where it asks if there are infinite, one, or no solution to a problem. Oh, I remember, those. remember those where if it's infinite if you get it done and everything on the left side of the equation is the exact same as the right side, mm -hmm. right? If there's one answer, it's when you find out that x is equal to something. And then look up what the no solutions. Just, you guys did that. Some of you kind of struggled with it back when we did it. I can find where it is in the book later, or you, if you find it, let me know. Remember, all this is being recorded, so if you 
if I'm going too fast, you can watch it again, skim through it. <clears throat> okay, on the back page, there's not a ton you need to do. 27, 29, and 30 are all that I found on the back, except I added one. Down here, factoring polynomials, which we spent a lot of time on, X puzzles, slide, divide, oh. bottoms up, 8-2 to 8-4. Oh, I remember those. That's where you'll find them in the book just to get a few practices in. Okay? Wait, wait. So now you don't have to worry about this whole strategic planner. Just focus on <laughs> the starred ones that you didn't feel comfortable with when you took the final, the practice final. Does that like, kind of narrow down your work? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are starting the final, 7th graders, next Thursday while the 8th graders are on their field trip. 8th graders, you'll be starting it next Friday. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week as well as today. And those days are all normal, full days. Question? You don't go on the field trip. Can we also if you're not on the field trip, you can start the final that day. Do you have to? If you're here, you're taking it. Since only like two people in my homeroom have given me permission.